text. David the psalmist, who's attributed to writing this particular psalm, Psalm 37. He wrote this psalm as an instructional. He wrote it as, as a, 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 a manual. He, he, he wrote it as a teaching psalm. He was given instruction how one, if you read the whole chapter, when you, when you get home, read the whole chapter, because he was given instruction of how one should conduct themselves in a society or an environment where it seems as though the wicked are prospering and the righteous are continuously being disgraced. He admonishes the worshipers in this psalm to remain faithful to God in spite of what the wicked are doing. And God, in return, will take good care of them. He describes the fate of the wicked, and then he, he describes the blessing of the righteous. This is where we find ourselves. Let's fast forward to our text in verse 23. After making the point in verse 22 of how those whom the Lord blesses will possess the land, and those of whom would, uh, uh, that would, he would curse would die, the psalmist then goes on to describe how God preserves the righteous who do good. Beginning at verse 23, look at what he says. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. In other words, the Lord directs the steps of the, of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. And he said in verse 24 that even if they stumble, they will never fall because the Lord will hold them up in his hand. Then, then David begins to state in verse 25, look at verse 25, so, uh, he begins to tell his own testimony. He gives his testimony, he said, from his personal experience, from his own observation, he says these words, I have been young and now I am old yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread my brothers and sisters David the psalmist stated in verse 22 of how the righteous will be blessed and the and inherit the land as opposed to the wicked and let me give you a prophetic word a prophetic word the prophetic word for from this text is the very same thing that God has an inheritance for those of us who are declared as righteous and does good which are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and are living a godly lifestyle tell somebody we have a promise we have an inheritance there is a spiritual promise that will be possessed and inherited by those who belong to God and walk upright which the translators call in the text in verse 23 a good man this spiritual promise that will be possessed and inherited by those who belong to God and walk upright uh -huh. God will give them because the spiritual promise is called purpose. It's called destiny. Somebody say purpose. Somebody say destiny. It is what God has designed for you before you were born. But in order to get there, you must, I say that you must align yourself with the Holy Spirit and get on course. How many know that there's a course that God has for you? You must get on the course that God has already prepared for you. God has already prepared for you the pathway. He's given you a set of steps that will lead you to your purpose, that will lead you to your destiny. How many know that God has already made a way for you? He made a way for you to attain your spiritual inheritance he already has ordered your steps God has designed the steps as the course and the pathway of your life and and steps steps my brothers and sisters steps are significant how are they significant pastor Steve they're significant in that it does three things number one steps take you through the process somebody say process number two steps help you to make progress somebody say progress and number three steps bring you to the fulfillment of what you are destined to possess somebody say possess my steps are 
ordered. You may be saying, well, pastor, how does God ordering my steps take me through the process? Well, let me, let me explain it to you because in order for me to answer, you must first understand the purpose of the process. The purpose of the process is to take you through a series of actions that will direct you to an expected end. It's the method by which God carries you to your destiny. The only way to reach your goals in life is to go through the process. Oh, come on, church. You don't just become a Christian and wake up one day and all of a sudden you're there. You have to go through the necessary steps. Come on, somebody. You have to go through the process. There's no such thing as an overnight success. Can I help somebody today? How many know that everyone wants success, but nobody wants to go through the process? Everyone wants the reward and the prize, but nobody wants to go through the process. Everyone wants to be on stage and lift it up. Come on. Everybody knows your name. Everybody wants to be recognized, but nobody wants to go through the process. Oh, everybody wants change in their lives, but you don't want to go through the process. Everybody wants recovery, but nobody wants to go through the process. You can't just arrive at your destination without taking the necessary step. As a matter of fact, the last I heard, the elevator was out of order. Tell somebody you're going to have to take the steps. You're gonna, uh, there's no shortcuts. The, the only way to the top is through the steps. If God wanted me to get there quick, he would have ordered me an elevator. He would have ordered me an escalator. But what he ordered for my life was steps. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Oh yes, yes, I've been, I've been a pastor for, for a few years, but what I've realized is that there's a whole bunch of people that wants to get there in one step. But the process requires that you take more than one step. That's why the psalmist said specifically in the text, the steps of a good man are ordered, not the step. Then another psalmist came along in Psalms 119, 133, and he began to petition the Lord. And he said, Lord, order my steps in thy word. Why? Why? Because he understood that this journey, the journey that we're on, requires more than one step. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, order my steps. Can you give him a praise right now? Come on, give him a praise. Order my steps. Whenever you take a step, it requires a single movement of raising one foot from one place and putting it down to another. Did you hear what I said? It requires you from, to, take, to raise one foot from one place and then put it in the next place. That's why steps have to be taken one step at a time. Somebody say step by step. Uh, let me help somebody because the next, uh, the next, the best way to get to the next level of your life is to take one step at a time. Oh, steps must be taken slowly. Steps must be taken gradually because each step is another part of the process. And my brothers and sisters, every now and then, I don't know about you, you may miss a step. You may even stumble during the process. But the psalmist declared in verse 24 that he even if you stumble, you won't fall because the Lord will uphold you with his hand. Tell somebody the Lord will hold you up. I need to talk to the person who told you that going through the process would be easy. I need to talk to them. I don't know who told you that, but I need to say, uh, spend about 60 seconds with them because I need to tell them that you lied to them. I need to tell them that you've been giving them a false hope. Uh, the fact of the matter is sometimes our feet may slip uh, and sometimes while climbing the steps, uh, we, might f we might stumble. But when your steps are ordered by the Lord, uh, I dare you to tell somebody, he won't let you fall oh no he won't let you fall look at somebody say I'm still here I may have stumbled but he wouldn't let me fall if I would have failed I would have gave up if I would have failed I would have backslid if I would have failed I would have went to where I came from but thank God he held me up tell somebody one more time he won't let you fall he, he, uh, give God a praise somebody my steps are ordered please be seated not only